going guys uh, Michael X Christopher here um, I wanted to do a small web series about the basics of body jewelry so more of a introduction for people with piercings uh, even maybe something beneficial for some piercers uh, we're going to talk about the basics of jewelry quality um, so you know what to look out for when you're investing in body jewelry for yourself um, how some of that body jewelry works. Um, there's a lot of confusion between all the different types of jewelry, between the pop-in ones and the screw-in ones and external versus internal and all that. Um, so I'm hoping that these first few episodes will be really beneficial and then as we progress, so will the topics, so it will become more relevant to piercers specifically as we move on with still very relevant things for the individual to look out for when they're choosing a studio to go into. Um, but that will all start here at the jewelry level as much as anything else. So um, let me jump right into it. I'm going to show you basically every style of body jewelry that they make so that you know in this pandemic situation how to change your jewelry if you absolutely have to. Um, before you ever handle your jewelry, of course, okay, a couple things. Wash your hands well. Follow that uh, CDC guideline for washing your hands with soap and water. Okay, dry them off well before you ever handle your jewelry. Gloves would be even more ideal, um, but you know, you may not have access to that. So at least clean hands is gonna be your best first step. Um, secondly, um, don't use any tools, okay? You shouldn't have to, with any jewelry out there, um, use you know a pair of pliers, your old fishing pliers and things like that. You, know, you don't wanna pull those from uh, out of the, the tackle box in the garage where they've got grime and dirt and all sorts of funky stuff on it. Okay, that will go onto your jewelry, creating a potential dirty problem, but as well as damage the jewelry. Okay, these things are not meant to really be handled with tools like that because the metal on metal can cut into it, which I'll actually demonstrate for you in a second. So um, even though I'm gonna show you how to do this at home, I still always suggest you try and find a professional piercer because they're gonna be able to do these things safely and they're gonna be able to compensate if something's wrong with your piercing. You know, when you take the jewelry out and you put it back in and you finagle with it, it may lead to some swelling. Even if it's a years old piercing, then that jewelry may not have enough room to accommodate and you have a really big problem on your hands. So at least a piercer is going to have, you know, the appropriate tools and the knowledge to kind of um, do it carefully and then uh, follow up any issues that they run into and give you more advice on how to take care of it leaving that. So when you do this at home, you're kind of at the disadvantage of troubleshooting your own piercing uh, and there are some really good resources out there like ask a professional piercer on uh, Facebook there's a group dedicated to that where you can just submit a photo in and they'll kind of jump into it and say well you know this or that but it's always so hard to tell based off of a photo starting with the most common thing you're probably gonna run into is labret it's extremely universal okay we could put this in an ear piercing anywhere along the ear mostly okay um, your lip piercing, even nostrils, okay? You'll see this a lot. The nice flat disc is gonna rest comfortably against the back of the ear, the inside of the lip, okay? And then the internal threading here, the smooth shaft that is, won't irritate the skin as it goes along, okay, in and out. Being internal also allows you to interchange all the different tops. With internal jewelry, as long as it's the same threading or the same size that is the gauge, it's gonna be interchangeable. That's how these work, okay? It's a righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Definitely takes practice. Once you get started on there, you just continue to torque it down until it's good to go. The other thing that you're gonna see that looks almost identical to it is gonna be a push pin. So this is not necessarily something new, but it's catching on, okay? So um, this, it will look almost identical, okay? Except you're gonna have no thread of any sort on the inside there and that's because these don't screw in they push in so you've got this piece here okay and this piece has a little post and so you'll insert this okay you'll give it a little bit of a kink I'm gonna kind of pull it this way okay give it a little kink and that'll create friction on the shaft so you push it in there and that sucker is in there good you can see all the force I had to put on it and it pops out I do really like push pins it's just Far less common to see although increasingly popular so I'm sure you'll see that around a lot more okay so that's the other thing and then rings the most common ring you might see is called a captive bead ring it's got two little dimples Let's see if we can get that 
Yep, right there. Little dimple. Okay. And then the rounded edges here. Okay, and now typically the trick is to put the dimple that you can't see down. So I'm kind of pushing on it right now, right? And then you guide that top one in, okay? And it pops into place nice and comfortably and it's in there really securely. These you don't really fuss with very much. Um, if we really needed to open it to get it into you know, a, a piercing, uh, we would torque it sideways. And I'll show you exactly what I mean um, by showing you a seam ring. Okay, this is becoming very popular too, okay, especially on gold. Um, and so this one, it looks very uh, similar to the next piece I'm gonna show you, but it only has just this one gap here. So what you have to do is you have to basically grab this side and this side and gently torque it, okay? Now you notice I didn't open it this way. I opened it this way, okay? Not this way because then when you try and push it back together, it becomes an egg and it never looks quite right. Now with this piece, um, let's see. Okay, see even at an angle, it's still lined up. I didn't open that gap any, I just did that. So then I can put it in the piercing, and then once it's back in the piercing, I'm gonna gently bring it back, and typically a little bit further, so that when you let go of it, um, it goes back into place, like that, really nice, right there, perfect. And usually these seams are not gonna be on, say, like the wearing part, so it's not gonna be right here in the middle where it's more likely to get caught and irritated in the piercing, right? So it's gonna be near the edge of the design or whatever the case may be. So that's a really nice feature. These are really fun um, when they're in gold <laughs> or niobium or something soft like that. When you find them in steel, even annealed steel, but especially titanium, they will hurt your fingers. And again, you don't wanna to bring tools out on jewelry. So even on titanium, you can damage the titanium by having to use these forceps to try and pry it. So um, I always prefer gold when it's this style. Now, the alternative to that, and which works really good with titanium, like this uh, Vatimer jewelry piece here, is the hinge. So it is, it is a little hinge, okay? And it's going to um, swivel like this to put it in the piercing. It's gonna swivel down and you're gonna pop it into place and it becomes very secure um, when it's like that. Um, it doesn't really require tools, although the small wearing surface here can be very difficult. If this was in my septum, you know, my skin would be all around here. So it's the, you get this little bit of room to work with that you need to kind of pop it open. But um, this is definitely easier to work with in titanium than say the seam ring would be, or even potentially a captive bead ring, because sometimes captives need to be opened up a little bit wider too. Another clicker style here from Industrial Strength. Okay, just about the same uh, thought process here. This one's straight across, um, but it is that same snapping mechanism right there, okay? Very satisfying. Um, circular barbell, okay, not called a horseshoe or bull ring, it is called a circular barbell. And again, this should be internally threaded, which means it's going to have threads only on the gem or ball, and then the um, shaft itself will have the hole. And that's nice because it makes it really interchangeable. You could go get like a cool opal uh, in a claw setting um, and you could put it right on here so you maintain that ring that fits just the way you want it. It's perfect, right? Why go risk getting a new piece that doesn't fit as well? Um, that's what's nice about these. Just get the appropriate gauge uh, end and you can go ahead and put it in here, okay? And that goes for curved barbells as well. Okay, a curved barbell here. Not specifically an eyebrow ring but a curved barbell, again, okay? Righty tighty, lefty loosey. In fact, these even come in um, your pushpin styles now as well, okay? 
so that might be an option that may pull and push apart and it might only be one side the other side might be fixed so you don't lose it and leaving you one side to pull and push apart okay and that applies for your standard barbell as well then you have your surface barbells and this will be just the same um, as a labret as it would be for a dermal again i don't have a dermal top or a microdermal anchor um, now uh, these are just going to be threaded tops so they screw in okay just like so okay just barely beneath the skin um, on and off okay so get lined up here now this is one of those piercings I, I really suggest you see a piercer for because when especially on a, a, a surface anchor when they're turning it there's a potential that they irritate the the shaft in here because they're not being able to support it like on a labret they would typically grab the back here right support the back as they turn in the front otherwise it doesn't help because this whole thing will just turn okay so you got to grab a portion of it so that you can do it now when you're torquing this under the skin you don't want to create this uncomfortable kind of movement especially on a dermal anchor there's not that much support that this bar has and so you can really upset your piercing very easily just by trying to do it yourself. So, you know, at least with a piercer, you know, we have our own personal techniques for kind of supporting the tissue and, and these uh, surface barbells or the um, surface anchors uh, underneath the skin when we torque down the pieces. So I definitely suggest always seeing a piercer for this, but, you know, midnight emergency, you caught this on your bath towel and the damn thing came off and unscrewed. Well, yeah, it's just a righty tighty lefty loosey situation, okay? Just a disclaimer that I always suggest seeking out a professional piercer. They're much more well equipped to handle jewelry safely. They're going to be able to wash their hands and put on a set of gloves, and then they're only going to handle the jewelry with those gloves. That prevents the spread of bacteria, germs, and even just body fluids like your oils on your fingers onto jewelry, especially when we don't allow other customers to handle the jewelry. Before you've ever worn it, you don't have 20 plus people on that jewelry. Of course there's ways for us to disinfect and sterilize jewelry safely, but it's even better if we try to prevent the possibility of introducing bad things to the jewelry to begin with. Something at home you can't really do. You can wash your hands carefully, odds are you don't have a nice set of new gloves to wear, and so that can be kind of a shortcoming of doing this at home yourself, okay? Again, this is more so as a filler during this pandemic situation that you'll be able to do this more safely at home by yourself, okay? another second part video I will go over specifically titanium versus steel versus niobium versus gold all that um, so look forward to that I'm glad you watched please hit that subscribe button because we will continue this series and I hope it benefits you